Okay, so we are on question five. I'm going to do five and six together because they're pretty short. So it says, house wiring circuits contain fuses and earth wires. Appliances are connected to these circuits in parallel. What is the purpose of the fuse in a circuit? Fuses are used to control the amount of current flowing through the circuit. If too much current enters the circuit, it melts and disconnects the connecting wires so as to avoid a fire from occurring. All right, so that gives you two marks. Then, what is the purpose of the earth wire in a circuit? To protect users of the appliance from getting shocked or electrocuted by sending current into the earth wire. Okay? When they, when they, when this, when the circuit short circuits. Now it says here state two reasons why appliances um, are connected in the circuit in C in parallel, and one so that when one appliance stops working, it does not affect all the other appliances, and two the voltage is not equally shared when the circuit is in series, and so additional more appliances will make their use ineffective. Right? It would make it work slower. It will make the appliance work slower in series. Because if you add, if you keep adding bulbs, if you set up a series circuit with two bulbs, and you add a third circuit, what would happen is that the bulbs gonna start getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. So, yeah. So that's that. And then here it says, um, Figure five shows a circuit diagram, and we have two resistors in parallel and the other two in series. So it says, use the circuit diagram in figure five to determine the total resistance in the circuit. And it's pretty easy. All you gotta do is use the formula for parallel and use the formula for series. So the formula for parallel is one over RP equals to one over R1 plus one over R2. And when you want to work out the the series, the um, resistors in series, the RS equal to R1 plus R2, right? I only, there's only two I put. You could keep going if you had four resistors in parallel, you keep going one over R3, one over, but since you only have two in parallel and two in series, well, we're gonna make this, we're gonna calculate this and then that will make R3. So let's get started. One over RP is equal to one over 6 plus 1 over 4. You find the common denominator for both, and then what you do to the bottom, you do the same to the top. So you're going to have 1 over RP equals to 10 over 24. Transpose RP will be equal to 24 over 10, and that will give you 2.4 ohms. This now, you could substitute it in for R3 and add the other two. I could make it R1, whatever you want. So I would use 2.4 as R1. This can be 1. And then you add 2. And then 3. And RS would give you 7.4 ohms. Okay, so that's the answer for that one. Now, looking at question 3, this is the total current in the circuit. To calculate current, you use... V equals to IR transpose, you get I equals to V over R. Alright, so let me put it that. So I, what is the voltage? You get the voltage from up here. So you put 24 volts over the total resistance, which is 7.4 uh, ohms. And that will give us a beautiful number of you guess it 3.2 amps okay then it says which fuse a 2a and this is like this question actually helps you because if you got a really big figure you would know it doesn't um it doesn't match back to number three you know you are wrong so it says which fuse a 2a fuse a 3a fuse or a 4 amp fuse is the most suitable to use in the circuit shown below well, it'll be 4 amps. You need it to go to 3 amps. So 3, you need to go to 3 amps and it's 3.2. So you need 1, that's L because it goes over the 3 amps. If if you put a fuse in there that's 3 amps, then it won't be effective, right? 
So you want four amps. If it goes over four, that makes more sense. You cut the you short circuit. The, you put enough fuse to short circuit the the um, circuitry. Okay, and that's the end of question five. See, told you it was very short. It was super short. And now we're gonna do question six, which is also short. It's very short as well. And we're gonna start with, it says complete table three below to show the properties of the three types of radioactive emissions. This is a charge. Okay, so the charge for uh, alpha particle is plus two, beta is negative one, and gamma is zero. Ionizing ability, strongly ionizing on collision with neutral fear molecules. Then this one is weakly ionizing on collision with neutral air molecules. And then this one now is very weakly. So you go from strong to very weak. Very weakly ionizing when wave energy is absorbed by air molecules. So you should have something like this. So strongly ionizing, weakly ionizing, and very weakly ionizing with um, information given. Examples are information. You didn't need to put the information there. Just a strongly, weakly, very weakly, right? Now it says here, complete the following nuclear equations. And we have here coming from carbon-14, nitrogen-14, the mass didn't change. And mass doesn't change whenever there's a beta decay. And also proton increase, which our protonic number increase, our atomic number increases when there is beta decay. This one, we're going from RA to RN. And so we're going from 226 to 222. So we had a, a mass loss of four. So whenever you have a mass loss of four and a, and a proton number loss of two, it's the alpha particle, helium. Four easy marks right there. Now it says a radioactive sample had an initial count of a thousand as measured on a Geiger Muller counter. After 15 hours, the count rate was 1250. Calculate the half life of the sample. Okay, so remember, half life is um, the time it takes for the original sample to um, break down to half its original amount, right? So if the original amount is 1000, then it should break down to half of that, which is 500, and then half of this, which is 250. And so we know we had to pass through two half lives. So this equals to two half lives. So since that's the case, 15 hours divided by two would equal to 7.5 hours. Right, so every 7.5 hours, the sample breaks down by half its amount. Right, so another 7.5 hours, this would be half to 50, 125. Let me make sure. Yeah, sounds like that. So, right, and then it keeps breaking down and down and down. So, 7.5 hours, and that will give you five whole max. Okay, and that's that. Told you it was going to be short. Um, question 5 and 6, done. And that's the test in a nutshell. Good night.